Hello, my bug boner brain trust. Today we gather to heed the tale of my favorite, that's right, favorite book of all time, Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. Very favorite. So nervous around it. <laughs> you make me nervous. <laughs> okay. And you better love it or I will kill myself. And then I'll kill you. Fahrenheit 451 tells the story of Guy Montag, who is named as such, I believe, because he is kind of the representation of your run of the mill, Joe Schmo. Every man. He just masturbates on every man. He's the physical representation of the beliefs and principles of the super duper f***ed up society. But the deeper you delve, this is delving. <laughs> I'm barefoot. But the deeper you delve, and the more he gets to know this whimsical 17 year old character, Clarice, who has catalyst written all over her. She has catalyst tattooed on this side of her face and then just norte on the other side. Then it's just a man who wants to be woken up from the nightmare that the world has become around him. Bradbury takes great care to establish a world that was not at the time, but now is so searingly close to our own world that it makes me bum hard. They watch TVs yeah. projected on walls all day and they listen to what I can only describe as podcasts all night and they <sighs> burn books. <laughs> Don't burn the vex. Don't burn the vex. <laughs> and they turn in their neighbors for having them because they think books are dangerous. Son of a horse's dick! They offend and promote thought that is not sanctioned by the government. And in this ass backwards society that is a representation of my worst nightmare, Firemen don't put out fires, they f***ing start them to burn the very books that Nurky McTattletales reported on. We didn't stop a fire. Oh yes we did, we did because we're so f***ed up. This is a world coded in fear and on the brink of another world war. You never really find out why due to copious amounts of media censorship. It's espanol. Censorship. There's this wonderful tension throughout the book that just feels like you're walking on a tightrope and it's about to snap. Like, have you ever been at Disneyland and then like the, you know, the ballerina and she's on the tightrope and then it like goes up and then it's like a alligator underneath? God, that freaked me out! <laughs> or when you realize that the kid you brought home from the grocery store is not even yours and you don't even have kids or a home. It's just a box covered in feces to keep away the aliens. Suffice to say, the situation has gone real bad and you can pretty much straight up deduce that it's going to get way worse. All because of one question Clarice poses to Guy Montag upon their first meeting. Are you happy? And then... <laughs> because of all the aforementioned horseshit of bad, Guy is on a bullet train to opposite land when it comes to happiness. Are you kidding me? Do you know what happiness is? Tell me. This causes a tidal wave of rash decisions on Guy's part and inevitably turns his shit upside down, changes everything for Evsies. It is just one of the most thrilling sequence of events I have ever read. And from the bottom of my soul's butt, I just can't recommend anything. <laughs> this book changed my life. It changed the way I looked at everything and the way that I felt about most things. Even with the overtones of censorship and Big Brother and government, Ray Bradbury always fought the notion that that was the message of the book. He never intended for it to be about censorship. Instead, he saw it as a cautionary tale about the power that technology has over a person's life, which is way more relevant today than it ever was when he wrote the damn thing in 1953. Technology is sick tits, don't get me wrong. But like anything that has addictive qualities, it makes a great servant but an unforgiving master. Heed the bury. Heed him real good. For my boner rating, I give Fahrenheit 451 one million boners ablaze with the light of fiery glory. Painful to witness, but truly awe-inspiring. Fiery boners, fiery boners everywhere.
If you like this book, I recommend The Great Gatsby by F. Scotch Fitzgerald. He was an alcoholic. Was he? It is a, nope, not this. This. <laughs> it is another cautionary tale that has stood the test of time by being a kick-ass read. Irma Garrett Berks. Click the box on the right to check out what the flush with Zack as he bought Mars into the bowels of Black Swan. It's Zack's turn. Click the box on the left to watch an episode from season one of Britney's Book Boner Bistro. Look at that little zygote of a book boner. Just waiting for some splooge to come along and fertilize it so it can turn into a dinosaur. I missed that day in health class, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. The miracle of life. Subscribe, or I'll kill your family. I'll kill them all. All of them. <laughs>